Hi guys, Eric Lowe here from Swordling Historical Swordsmanship. In a previous video, I shared an interpretation of Marazzo Zabattimento for the single sword using a long sword. Today, just like we did with the side sword, I'm going to break down the same form for a uh, long sword into three parts. If you're curious about the historical applicability of doing this form with a two-handed sword, particularly a small two-handed sword such as I have in my hand right now, uh, skip ahead a couple of videos to the context video. For now, we're going to assume that everybody's on board with this project and begin our section in Cotolonga Strata. Just like uh, with the long sword, just like with the side sword, we have four uh, four movements here, all of which use the falso in one way or another. We begin with a falso, uh, falso tondo to the opponent's head, so we are essentially arcing our point at their face here. We assume that they're going to uh, give us a parry in response, and so we give a mandrito pendente, uh, which is going to circle around that parry. We drop the sword down, expand the foot, and come straight back down into their head. That's particularly uh, in preference to doing a sort of a ribbon cut like this, which may seem more natural in the air, but is not going to work if our opponent is uh, resisting in any, way, in any way. With the long sword, this is actually easier than it is with a side sword because I have my back hand and I can use that to steer uh, what is essentially a tramezone to bring my sword out of the way of that parry, straight back down into their head as I expand my right foot forward a little bit. The uh, next bit of the form, the opponent gives us any sort of uh, high attack. We hit their sword hand. Uh, I'm not aiming for their weapon right now. I am trying to arc the tip or uh, the weak of my false edge into their hand or their wrist, well, you know the from there straight back down to their head. I don't need to move my feet at this point because they are attacking me. If they are still functional, um, this they'll be moving their sword. Uh, they'll be moving their sword to parry this uh, parry this pendente. I'm going to get out of the way of that sword as I let my left foot drive my right in and uh, again into their head. The next uh, use of the falso is also against any kind of high attack, but this time I am aiming for the sword. I'm going to arc around with my left foot. Uh, this is gonna let me get out of the way of the attack and also help push their sword past my shoulder. As I recover my right foot, I let my, uh, my hands loop around and I give them a reverso squalambrato, as Marazzo says, from their head to their feet. So this is gonna arc all the way around. I'm gonna ride that momentum as I step back to cover myself. This mandrito is supposed to specifically uh, cover their arms. Whether it actually makes contact or not, I need to make sure that I'm sweeping that volume of space to protect myself against whatever may be coming back, and then I reset into Cota Longa Strata. Those three motions, the falso uh, from the right into the face, falso from the left into the hands, and then the falso from the left into the sword. Those are the first chapter of Marazzo's uh, form. He then gets into a second chapter, which he, uh, wraps up the first third of the form, which is another use of the falso, uh, this time with footwork that's a little more complex. Um, he notes specifically that my opponent's sword is supposed to be on their right for this. I'm going to step forward with my left, but I'm not going to step straight forward, um, because the action he prescribes with the sword here is another falso into their sword. So the first one was arcing my point into their face. This time I am trying to beat their sword out of the way. If I step straight forward and they deviate under, uh, under this falso, 
that I'm going to be eating a point straight into the chest. So instead, I'm going to step forward off to my left. This way, if the uh, if my beat does not connect with their sword, if they deviate under, I can cover and withdraw. I haven't committed myself, and uh, I have some room to recover if everything goes poorly. If this does work, then I'm going to step again, still uh, working my way around the imaginary circle that I am fighting on as I give a reverso tondo to the face. Step back with another reverso, which is a nice wide cut. I'm just trying to clear space here. And I end in Cotolonga Alta with my left foot forward, ready for the next part of the form. So that last part again, I'm in Cotolonga Streta. I step with my left as I cut to my left, and that's weird. So in order to make sure that that works, I need to be turning my foot out so that my hips don't lock out. I can really turn my hips into that. As I step again, I'm pointing my foot so that I can really turn my hips into this cut into their face. After that, step back, clearing cut, and I'm ready to go. All four parts. I have a falso to the face, goes to the parry, straight in. I have a falso to the hand, threaten the face, avoid the parry as your foot comes up, forward into their face. Falso to the sword, reverso from their head to their feet, step back and cover yourself, reset, falso to the sword, reverso to the face, step back, cover yourself, and here we are in Cotolunga Alta ready to go. In the next video, we'll cover the next set of defense, uh, the next set of the form, which is a series of defenses against thrusts. For now, I hope that's helpful, and we'll see you next time.